how did you as a fan because I, I'm sure that you wouldn't have known. Um, I mean, people on set on the day didn't know that that was going to be uh, Luke. So how did you react? Uh, feel free to cre- recreate the reaction when you saw <laughs> that return. My family and I, we, we have, I have two sons, 16 and 11, and my wife. And our, our, our ritual on Fridays when The Mandalorian airs is we get up super early and we watch it as a family. Now, this is done after the boys have gotten ready for school. There's no shilly-shallying. If they're not ready, we don't watch it. And we're watching it, and uh, it's starting to unfold. And there's only one real way, in my mind, that our, our heroes can get out of this, right? It, it literally is almost like Deus Ex Machina. You, you're waiting for that drop. And when that X-Wing showed up, I have to admit, I thought it was my character. For a split second, even I thought, <laughs> oh, my God, it's Carson Teva in the, in the New Republic. And then I immediately went, you idiot. You didn't shoot any of that. Who else flies the next wing? And from that moment on, the little reveals, the step by step, my breath started getting shorter and shorter. And it was I was hyperventilating almost just watching. And my kids were like, no way, no way. And I got goosebumps talking about it right now. But the state, you know, step by step. The cloaked figure, the green lightsaber, the gloved hand, all of that leading up to could it be, could it, it could only be. And when he, when the, the cowl finally gets removed as him, we leapt to our feet and we are whooping and hollering. It was just so, it, it was just so perfect. It was such a cathars- just cathartic moment to just finally get to this. Wah! There he is. It's because of course. It's got to be Luke. Yes, they they had Ahsoka in there. Yes, Ezra Bridger could still be alive. That's how smart they are. They realize, in terms of the storytelling, what has the maximum impact? What's going to what's going to seismically shift everything, and what makes a logical sense as well? And it that isn't fan pure fan service. I mean, they walk that so beautifully in terms of giving the fans great Easter eggs or great emotional payoffs while still serving the story and not pandering to that, you know? And the two years of seeing Din Djarin with his helmet on and finally taking it off for love. Hmm. It is just, it was such wonderful storytelling at that moment. Pedro Pascal, the frustration he would, maybe he would have felt for the last two seasons of having to wear a helmet and all the, the gossiping and crap that was going on. It was just like, such a beautiful moment. And it closed off that, that particular storyline so well. I loved, loved, loved it. And then, of course, you get people complaining about the CGI. And it's like, okay, you know what? It's just, this is why we can't have nice things. Right? We can't have nice things. We don't deserve nice things. But that's something they can tweak as time goes on. I think they have with the Rogue One with Tarkin and, yeah. and Leia. So were your kids um, more excited to see uh, you in The Mandalorian or Luke in The Mandalorian? They were, I think, because they, they ha- if it happened the same episode, I think they would have just totally gone with Luke anyway. Um, which is great, as they should. <laughs> but I think when my episode aired, they were totally jazzed, uh, even more than me, because it was like to see their dad in Star Wars, in The Mandalorian, was just like, ah, they, it's, it's a point of pride for them. I'm sure. It's not, yeah. it's a, hey, dad was in The Mandalorian. <laughs> Did they know, though, or was it like a little, we're, gonna, we're all going to watch The Mandalorian anyway, because that's what we do. We're all Star Wars fans as a family. Um, and was this the kind of the surprise <laughs> for them, or, or had you had you given them like a heads up? I, I had to give them the heads up just because uh, when I disappeared for for a few days at a time and I had to fly to the States, they're like, well, where are you going? And so I had to tell them what I was doing. And I had to tell somebody because I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. So that felt good to be able to tell my kids we are still on the edge of our seat because we had no idea how it was going to turn out. Those who can stomach watching themselves, they want to know, well, was it good? And so that I asked my fans, so was that okay? And they were, the resounding, yes, that was excellent. You fit right into the world, dad. And that was a big relief. I was like, okay, okay. I, I look like I belong. Yeah, relax now, relax. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wikipedia entry confirmed. You've made the cut. Yeah. Um, so if you, could, if you could sum up your Luke response in one noise, what would that noise sound like? This was a bonus clip from your monthly Star Wars interview series on The Geek End. Check out the full interview with Paul and why not subscribe for more Star Wars and other movie-related content.